Picture a scene with a lot of danger and stress, where the life of the President of the United States is in danger. What would make someone do something so horrible? And how did the police stop what could have been a very bad assassination? Come with us as we look into the terrifying details of the plot to kill Donald Trump. We'll talk about what happened, why the attack happened, and what it all means for national security as a whole. The fairgrounds in Butler, Pennsylvania were crowded with fans of Donald Trump wearing red Make America Great Again hats on a scorching weekend evening. The sky was clear and blue. Before the Republican National Convention the next week, the once upon a time and maybe future president held his final rally at this location, which was known for its friendliness and joyful atmosphere. Butler County, which is located just north of Pittsburgh in the important swing state, was won by him by a margin of around 2 to 1 in both 2016 and 2020. As President Trump arrived sporting his own red mega hat, a speaker yelled out, God bless the United States of America. Trump then went on to say, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm finally free. He stood in front of a line of American flags that were decorated with gold. He gestured, clapped, and pointed to his fans, several of whom were holding their mobile phones high in order to record him. Near the grandstands that were striped in red, white, and blue, the peaks of the white tents climbed into the sky. On the side of the rally that was to the left was a green farm combined. James Sweetland, a retired emergency department physician, described the experience as being similar to an old-time rock concert. During the time that they were waiting for Trump to make his entrance, Sweetland assisted a fellow attendee who was experiencing discomfort due to the heat of the day. He advised her to lie down and provided her with water until the arrival of emergency workers. He stated that at the moment, it seemed like the worst thing that could ever take place. A Trump 2024 denim vest that was created by her husband was worn by Jolie Montelion, who is 57 years old and is from Butler. She was sitting in the bleachers behind Trump. The 60-year-old Kristen Petrarca was also present. The statement that she made was, I had never been to a rally before and I really wanted to just experience it. Before addressing a usual list of complaints against the press media, President Joe Biden, and immigrants living in the country illegally, the former president mounted three steps to the stage, basking in applause and chanting USA, before beginning his speech. His bogus assertions that the election in 2020 was rigged against him were often repeated by him. Trump hits the stage in Butler, Pennsylvania at 6.2 p.m. Eastern Time, he indicated a giant video screen that displayed statistics on the number of people crossing the border. According to Sweetland, who was seated close to the bottom of the screen, he had the impression that Trump was looking directly at him. Chaos broke out in the seconds that immediately followed. Within a distance of less than 200 yards, another scene was taking place, which neither Sweetland nor Trump were aware of. Some of the people who were attending the event had observed a man climbing to the top of a nearby building. An officer from the local police department was lifted up by another officer so that he could grab the edge of the roof, according to the officials from the local town. In accordance with the statements made by Butler County Sheriff Michael Sloop, the officer retreated to a safe location shortly after the gunman turned around and pointed his weapon at him. Then the shots, confusion is present, disobedience. After 6.10 p.m. Eastern Time, shots were fired at the event. A grasp was made on Trump's right ear. It was a duck. There was a horde of Secret Service agents dressed in dark suits stacked on top of him, all of them prepared to take a bullet. There will be more shots. During the event, some attendees yelled out, get down, as others ducked. Even more people attempted to keep their mobile phone cameras focused at the commotion that was taking place on stage. Petrarca claimed that everyone was shouting and trying to hide in between the bleachers. Everybody was just like screaming he said. In addition, I am being forced down in the space between the bleachers, which is where your feet would be right now. The Secret Service operative's urgent conversation was caught up by Trump's microphone, which picked up them. I got you, sir. I got you. Shooters down. We're clear. We're clear. Let's move. With his cap knocked off and his hair tangled, the agents assisted him in standing up. His hair was also twisted. Over time, they continued to encircle him. Trump took a momentary stop as they were beginning to remove him off the platform. He was eager to retrieve his footwear. And then he paused once more. Then he yelled out, wait, 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 and wait some more. He gazed out past the agents to the astonished but loving throng, and he pumped his fist. 
Blood was covering his ear and streaking over his face in two rivulets that met on his tightly pressed lips. He was also covered in blood. Even when he was in the midst of the horrifying attempt on his life, the former reality TV star did not let his instincts for spectacle and symbolism fail him. He mouthed the word fight, fight, fight. They yelled. Agents loaded him into a black SUV and drove him away. His followers began chanting all around him as they surrounded him. Trump is led to a car at approximately 6.12 p.m. Eastern Time. The aftermath was a maze. After the failed attempt at assassination, the Secret Service announced that its snipers had successfully eliminated the assassin. Even now, two days after the shooting, it is not obvious what the assailant was trying to accomplish or what he did in the hours leading up to the shooting. Donald Trump was not murdered by criminals. In spite of this, another life was taken during those times. Corey Comparator, a former fire chief who had worked for decades with the Buffalo Township Volunteer Fire Company, was sitting in a row of bleachers immediately to Trump's right. Comparator is 50 years old. He swooped down to protect his wife and daughter when he heard the pops of bullets. He was hit in the head by a bullet. The retired emergency room physician, Sweetland, was able to recall his muscle memory when he heard calls for assistance in the vicinity. As blood began to ooze out of a hole above the man's right ear, he ran to the severely injured Comparator and began performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR. State troopers touched him on the shoulder, took control of the situation, and then lifted Comparator up like a rag doll and brought him away on a stretcher. This occurred two minutes after Comparator had begun his operations. As Sweetland, who is from a town called Dubois, which is approximately 90 minutes away, stated, I looked up and I saw what I assumed would be his wife and a daughter that were there, and the look on their face was something I'll never forget. It was clear from the expressions on their faces that they were shocked and upset. Is he going to be okay? Is the question that everyone is asking themselves whenever they are in this predicament? All I could utter was, they are taking him to a place where he can get help, and that was all I could say. Elmore later slipped a red t-shirt over his white shirt, which was smeared with the victim's blood during an interview with the Associated Press. The clothing was stained with the victim's blood. What a nightmare it was, Elmore remarked. My prayers are with the family that has been forced to deal with this tragedy and is currently going through it because it is challenging. How difficult is it? David Dutch, 57, of New Kensington, Pennsylvania, and James Copenhaver, 74, of Moon Township, Pennsylvania, both of whom reside in communities that are located outside of Pittsburgh, were among the other individuals who sustained injuries. All of the men were reported to be in stable condition on Sunday. We did not feel any fear. According to Monteleone, we were pissed off, and we will not give up in this fight. We are going to take his vote. We are going to back him up. The United States of America is in desperate need of a strong leader like him. As Trump was being removed from the rally, several of the attendees directed their fury toward the journalists who were capturing the event. They yelled profanities and extended their middle fingers to the journalists. Some of them cried out, Are you happy? Which is Sweetland. After a day had passed after the shooting, his outrage had transformed into anger. He stated, I just hope and pray that everyone takes a step back takes a deep breath, lowers their temperature, and stops all of this vitriolic comments that are being made. This is not the United States of America that I am familiar with and like, and I really adore this nation. Intrigued by high-stakes stories and deep dives into dramatic events, hit subscribe and turn on notifications to catch more gripping content like this. Stay updated with our latest videos that uncover the most shocking and impactful moments in history.